Okay, now that we have our login page, our friends, our inbox, camera, and profile page, we want to actually get some data in here and we want to be able to actually authenticate and not just have a login button that doesn't do anything. So what we're going to do is start to add Supabase. So Supabase is a backend as a service that does authentication, it has storage, it has a Postgres database, which is a big thing that I like it about. It's similar to Firebase, but Firebase actually does have, I think, more features, but it has a non-relational database, which for something like this type of application where you have so many linked friends, likes, bookmarks, videos, um, anything like a, like a social media platform where it's so interconnected, doing using regular SQL or Postgres is a lot easier than doing setting it up in a non-relational database. And so that's why I picked Supabase for this one. And so to get started, you can either go to Supabase or Expo actually has, again, Expo has great documentation for Supabase integration. And so before we actually get started, actually, you know what, we're going to copy this. Um, we're going to install Supabase and while that's installing, we're going to set up our account. So let's stop the server and then click add. And in the meantime, we're going to go to Supabase. Now I already have an account and I created this before, uh, but I'm going to create a new project and we're going to call it tick, tick tock. And we're going to create a, okay. And we're going to create a new project. And while that's creating, let's see, we have our, everything created. And it's setting up the project. So it does take a second um, to add, but we can see some of the stuff here. So we can see our credentials for URL, JWT secret, and, and public. So to get some of these credentials, we're going to create a ENV file. So we're going to do touch.env. And this is where we're going to put some of the variables for um, from Supabase and the database URL. And let's make sure this is in our git ignore which it is not, so add.env, and you can do env.local if you want as well. Uh, we just don't want to commit our keys to anything by accident. And so, so now our project is created. That was actually pretty quick. And so we can see in here we have a table editor for when we actually have a table. We have SQL editor. We have our database, we have authentication, we have users we can set up here, we have storage where we're going to store our videos, uh, we have edge functions, which we're not going to use in this project, but if you needed a API endpoint for some reason, um, I, I could think of like for Stripe specifically, you could do webhooks with that, that would be helpful. And then real time, which is where we're going to use for the chat application to get real time feedback when someone is chatting to us. Okay, so what environment variables we're going to want to add is a few here. Expo public, Supabase URL, Expo public, Supabase add-on key, database URL, and direct URL. And you could find all of these in your dashboard. So you'll be able to see, like, if you go to your project settings, you could see the URL that you're going to copy and paste into the URL here. Let's put it in some quotes. Uh, same thing for the add-on key. We're going to put that here. Um, and just like it says, it's going to be the public version. So Expo public, it allows us to use it in the front end of the application. Uh, and then obviously the database URL and the direct URL, we do not want to be able to put public facing. So that doesn't, isn't prefaced with Expo public. Um, and so we can use Expo public as process.env.expo public database URL. Uh, and then for the database URL, we're going to go to database and then we could see the URI. So the right, this first one we're going to put in for the direct URL. I'm oh, sorry. We're going to put this one for the database URL. And then we're going to unclick this. For the uh, direct URL. And the database URL versus direct URL, direct URL we're going to run the migrations to. And so if you ever run a migration and it, and it kind of holds up, 
make sure you're using the right URL here. And you can see like it has different ports as well, 5432 and then 6543. Same usernames, um, same databases, but and same passwords, but uh, different URLs. So you can see this AWS Pooler and then Superbase regular one. Okay, so now that we have our environment variables, we have Superbase installed, we're going to add a new folder called utils. And in utils, I'm gonna to touch uh, utils slash superbase.ts. And in utils, we're gonna add this superbase.ts file. And in that file, we could go back to the Superbase um, documentation or uh, expo documentation, and we can see it has our example code. So we can literally just copy and paste this and put it into Superbase.ts, which did not copy. There we go. And where it has Superbase URL, we want to replace with this. So we're going to do process.env.dot, and then process.env.dot. I was hoping I would autofill. Nope. And so we have Superbase URL. Why is it component type string? Okay. And this is how we're going to create our client that we could use in our application. And so if we go to the next steps, it has a, an example app that we don't really need to use right now. Um, but we have Superbase installed in our application. And in order to tell that we actually have it installed, let's try to... Well, actually, no, we don't have any databases yet, so we're going to come back to that, actually. Um, so we have installed, but the next thing we want to do is actually create our database. Um, we can't really test it right now without having a database. Um, and so we're going to create this folder structure of our database in the next video.